I have a record, I, I, can, I can edit this bit. What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a special guest that I want to put onto the podcast and kind of make it a bit visual. I always do a podcast version and the audio, but I think this deserves a, um, a visual. It's someone I've spoken to before, um, someone who's in the same space as me, got great ideas, great insights. We've had uh, a topical conversation. I just thought, you know what? This is a great opportunity to share some stuff and I just want to bring him into the space, introduce him to you guys, we get cracking. So Conrado, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Yes, sir. What is going on, Kim Rob? What is going on to your audience? Um, more than anything, I'm a personal trainer. Granted, I do help people with male enhancement. You know, I kind of went down that rabbit hole, yeah. realized how much BS was involved in that. And then through my own failures, I'm like, hey, you know what? There's a lot of truth in this, too. And ironically, you know, I started looking at spirituality, started looking at all these different things and just looking for health solutions for men. So I kind of made a podcast called Mask and Health Solutions where, you know, I want to touch on everything. You know, the spiritual side of like what we should be doing as guys, fatherhood, brotherhood, all that kind of stuff. And just really go down these rabbit holes and, you know, talk to people like yourself, Kimron, you know, guys who got insight on, on different ways to be successful. But more than anything, just kind of navigate through these murky seas of life and try to figure it out as guys. So that's where I'm yeah. at. And that's what I do now. And honestly, that's that's my focal point, man. That's what I do. Help people get in shape mentally, spiritually and physically, I hope. <laughs> you know what? No, absolutely do. I think we're missing a lot of that because the women's space at the moment is full of self-love gurus, you know, yoga teachers, uh, women's empowerment, women's, um, not women's rights, but, you know, the fact of taking one's ownership into themselves. And I feel mm -hmm. in our space, there is a, a, a convex or converse reaction to that, whereas a lot of men are getting a bit guarded you know, with the whole women's movements, they don't know how to navigate the women being empowered to their needs. And they feel like they're being, um, I don't know, they're being emasculated per se, you know, yeah. by today's society. Yeah. And a lot of men, I feel, don't seem to understand themselves and therefore are, are putting that back into the world. And it's, it's kind of, say toxic, it's kind of not helping us to really understand who we are, but most importantly, understand how we fix or how we how we fix ourselves into the world and how we have our process. I'm curious though, right? I, there's, there's a couple of subjects I want to talk about. And primarily, like I mentioned, I really want to get into the awareness section of, of us, you know, in terms of men being aware of who we are. Because I think a lot of us don't even know like what, what we like, you know, who we are, what yeah. interests and what our purpose is. We seem very, very reactive nowadays. Right? Something happens, we're all over the place and we lose our shit, you know, and then we get angry with the world then we get red pilled. I mean, right then yeah. we get divorced and we go big tower it's like there isn't a there isn't a balance to enable us to rebound after a bad relationship or rebound after trauma and then mm -hmm. find our center like what was your experience man from going from something traumatic to then getting back to your center and so forth well for me i guess the first traumatic experience is like okay you know let, let's say you get your ass kicked a lot as a kid you know that was <laughs> me right i guess you could relate Kurt, and all that right so <laughs> yeah you know for me obviously it was a little bit over the top but the one thing that I, I will say I took from it was that as a young kid, I don't, I don't know why, but I just told myself, you know what, I'm going to be six foot, 220 pounds so nobody can fuck with me anymore. Yeah, That was my goal. And that was kind of like, and it was weird because I reflected on that and I was just like, that's kind of a weird thought to have as a six year old kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> but sure enough, it kind of taught me the importance of having a focal point because at 15, I reached that goal, but it also taught me something else like now what? But, you know, and that's kind of where you have to keep growing and you have to keep like the law of expansion, right? It's one of those universal mm -hmm. laws that just kind of exists that you always got to be striving for something more. But then the second time where I could say, you know, I really, uh, you know, I guess life just kind of hit me in the face was I think having my kids, man, like the first time I'm not going to lie, you know, my wife can probably attest to it. You know, I wasn't as mature as I should have been, <laughs> you know. But the second time, you know, we went through some difficulties in that with my son and, and you know, it really put things into perspective about what, what really matters and what doesn't. And I think as a man too, like, cause our doctor was saying like, oh, you should abort. And I'm like, you know what, man, this doctor, no, nah, man. Like, I don't think we should, like, if I really believe there's a God out there, then who is this guy to tell me this is the way I yeah. should go about doing this, right? And I know we live in this day and age where it's like my body, my, I'm like, that's fine. You can do whatever you want with your body. However, there will always be consequences. And that was one of the things where I'm like, you know what? I told my wife, like, let, let's just try and then we'll go from there. And ironically, it was almost like, you know, the floodgates just opened up and everything just started to work out miraculously. Right. But I think as a man, it really made me like, that's kind of where I, I feel like I really took on the role, like as father, like, it's almost 100% committed. Like it just changed my perspective, I guess. And I think for a lot of guys too, it's almost like, I think, I think kids are almost like your, 
it's almost like the biggest way to learn this life because it forces you to like look at yourself and be like hey you got a lot of defects right that's when I started to realize like, man, you know, like there's a lot of things I got. I'm not perfect by any means. You can ask my wife. She'll probably be like, you know, she'll probably make you a list a mile long. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it does teach you as a man, like this is where you need to step up. You know, you, you got to, you know, hold it down financially. You got to be there when your kids are in trouble. You got to be there when your kids are scared. You got to be there when, you know, your wife needs support. You got to figure all these things out. And it's almost like, unless you're able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, you know what, I got to work on myself. And I, as a man, if I, you know, not associate as a man, because that's something that I feel like is so flimsy these days. Like, if you're going to be a real dude in this time, it's like, you know what, you're down for, for your family for by whatever means necessary. However, you know, you are willing to sacrifice whatever it takes. Right. And for me, that's kind of biggest, been the most grounding thing, I think, right, where it's like, fatherhood really teaches you what it takes to be a real man not this right. you know new age <laughs> video game playing you know like is that a real man though? That, you know <laughs> i want to catch up on this right because this is this is where i think it gets really really interesting for us especially in the space that we're in where we're trying to help people elevate and they're like well why, why how can you help me you know i'm a man i stand I, I stand up and i pee that makes me a man right i can be aggressive that makes me a man right i can have sex with a girl that makes me a man so i'm curious right because whenever i do anything i always like to get the de our definition of real man because you know some women sometimes they're like just be a man right? i've had so many girlfriends back in the day said to me be a man step up i'm like what do you know about being a man? <laughs> what exactly. do you know? You, you know about so when you say being a man, because obviously you talked about when you were 16, you know, you had this, this thing at six, and then when you're 16, you achieved that goal of being so physically overbearing that you're protecting mm -hmm. yourself, right? But yeah. having your children is giving you the more emotional maturity to protect yourself. So I'm just curious when you say real man, what's your definition of it versus what you think the world thinks a real man is? I think a real man is just a guy that's always willing to do whatever it takes in the right situations, you know, and isn't scared of the repercussions. It's almost like you got to be that dude who's a free thinking guy, like not so much the whole alpha omega, like none of those archetypes, I guess. It's more like you're a free thinker that's willing to do what you want in a way that doesn't hurt anybody. And you're not really scared of what anybody's going to say. And you're always there to, I, I think for manhood, I guess like if I could boil it back down a little bit, like as to some of the most important factors is, you know, your growth, because you got to keep growing, right? Like that's one of the things that a man's got to keep growing, keep developing himself. And the other thing is just like, how am I making this world a better place? And I think it's right. almost, you, you got to develop that selflessness through life, man. Like there's no other way around it. I kind of feel like experiences just kind of kick your ass and then you figure out like, okay, man, like what am I doing here, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of feel like that selflessness is like, okay, how do you develop that too? So it's almost, you got to have that growth. You got to be selfless, but at the same time, know when to hold it down. Like you just got to be like, Hey, you know what? I got to protect my own protect, provide and progress. Those are the three that I was like, P's for. three P's there. There you go. Yeah. I'm like, ah, I knew it was, it was in my yeah, yeah. mind somewhere, but I kind of feel like those are the three cornerstone kind of like ideals right. to what it takes to be a real man right like are you always progressing are you always developing yourself and are you providing right providing for your family for society how are you making this world a better place right 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 and then protection is kind of like bro like you know hey they're gonna look at you if something happens somebody breaks in here you know like they're not they're not gonna go run to mom <laughs> right i got you i got you yeah yeah i'm curious though this yeah because you know i want to i want to touch on the awareness element something that i've recently gone through myself and had some insights in but obviously talking about the three p's right that comes after you become aware of the lack of something like something traumatic might have happened to yeah. you that makes you think oh shit you know god damn i'm not as happy as i thought or i don't have enough mm -hmm. money as i thought or I'm not stable as I thought, like something has to happen. Like three biggest teachers, you know, broke the relationships and failure, right? So one of yeah. those is to kick you in your ass. When it kicks you in your ass, you're like, wait, okay. But the thing is, how many people are broke and they're like, oh, life sucks, man. You know, I, I you know, can't get a job. You know, the, the world hates me because I'm black or, you know, I work from a poor background. My parents didn't have good money management. They didn't save money for me, you know, and then the fear of failure. Right. So they, they try something, they failed. Oh, it wasn't for me. Oh, I can't, it can't work. I don't have this skill. And then heartbreaks, you know, how many people, you know, and I know, are attracting yep. the same person, then be like, it's her fault. 
<laughs> it's her fault, right? She took all my money. It's her fault, right? So yeah. we have these three biggest teachers, but they're all lacking one fundamental thing, which is awareness. So I believe mm-hmm. for us to even tr- start to have the three Ps, understand the things that we, that we have, it's awareness. So you became yeah. aware, but it took you a while. Like, what do you think is, yeah, for, you, for the men, what do you think is the thing that they need to develop the ability, the skill, to just be aware of what the hell's going on and stop having the same problems with new faces? Exactly. But the other thing I had to step away from too is the victim mindset. Right. You got to like, and that's kind of like the one thing, like I'm really working on with my son as well. Cause you know, I, I see, I guess some of that, you know, reflecting back at me, but that's kind of the way I was at it as a kid as well. Right. So it's one of those things that I think, especially in this day and age, society is always kind of trying to out victim everybody. Right. Like, no, man, I really suffered. I was <laughs> black. Legend, <laughs> transgender, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was a refugee and who I really suffered. You know, and it's almost like now yeah. people are just <laughs> they're just adding as many taglines as they can to like yep. this is why the world owes me. And I'm like, Yep, you gotta come to the realization that nobody's coming to save you, man. That's kind of what I see more than anything around me with that I want to just communicate to guys and just yep. everybody in general, like females, guys, everybody. So like, you know what? It doesn't matter. Nobody cares about the fact that you're a victim. What are you going to do now? You could take mm. that anger, you could take that pain, transmute it, and use it for something good, right? Or you could just sit there and wallow in self-pity. But a lot of people, I mean, it kind of goes back to that whole concept of they're unconsciously incompetent. They don't know what they don't know. And if you don't know what you don't know, good luck going anywhere else. Because that's all you know, that whole, that what was me, the self-pity. It's almost like you, you got to... You got to come across somebody or something that's going to inspire you, whether it's a book, whether it's an experience. And to me, it's almost like one of the things that I think is huge is almost like giving back because then you're able to reflect a little bit more, right? It's like, you know what? You're able to help out somebody that's got a little bit less than you. It really makes you value the things you have. And it makes you want to progress because if you do, right, then you're able to help more people. And I think that that's completely relevant. Like, it all ties in, man. Like everything's connected. We are all connected, you know, whether it's spirituality, the whole holistic approach, man, like all that energy. And I think we become too attached to the things of this world, not knowing that we are not really of this world. You know, I really buy into the whole, like, you know what, we're metaphysical beings having a physical experience. Yeah. And the older I get, the more I'm like, you know what, this, this vessel that I have, I've worked really hard to make it a certain way. However, when I die, I can't take it with me, man. I'll take it you with know? you. Yep. It's funny you say that, you know, it's funny you say that, so cut you, but it's funny you say that about attachments, because I'm just curious though, because we all have accumulated knowledge. Right, from our past experience growing up and whatever, whatever, but accumulated knowledge sometimes gets us in trouble. So, like, when you talk about attachment, like, what do you, what do you, why do you think we attach? And then, what do you think, what's the best way then for us to unattach ourselves from the, from the earth, from the earthly worldly things that we currently attach to? I think the reason why so many of us feel attached to whatever it is that we have, whether it be materialistic things that we have or let's say uh, from a vanity perspective, your beauty, whatever it may be. I think a lot of people, including myself to a degree, you know, we attach that to our identity. Mm. And it wasn't until I don't remember what I was like watching or listening to man or what I was reading, but it was basically saying that like your identity is almost like, it's almost like it's your ego, right? So you're just trying to protect this thing that doesn't really exist. It's what you project into this world. And your ego is basically you taking in the information of how you perceive others to perceive you. So it's almost like, I got to have a certain amount of money. I got to do this. I got to do that. And that way society will look at me as being more important. It's like, I'm a doctor or I got a PhD attached to my name. And I want to make sure everybody calls me doctor, you know, so that, you know, I got that gratification (laughs) and that self gratification, I think is where a lot of people get confused into like, Hey, you know what? That's not really who you are. Who are you at Mm. your essence? And you know, that, that goes for everybody. It's like where you live, what you have. I mean, the body that you've developed, like all that stuff. I mean, it all fades away. And the older I get, the more I realize like, you know what? Humanity is beautiful, but we are fragile at the same time, man. Like we are not going to last forever we're not immortal however i think from a spiritual perspective and that's really what i've been you know getting more into you know that that energy if we really follow newtonian physics i mean energy cannot be created or destroyed so where do we go from here 
and that's kind of one of the things like that's one of the rabbit holes that I just kind of been going down, you know, <laughs> the older I get now. And I tell my kids is like, you know, you got to make sure you treat people right, because all that stuff, you know, as far as your judgment and all this stuff that happens after we die, like I'm curious to all that. And I've been tying it into the Eastern philosophies slash, you know, I was grow I was brought up Christian. However, you know, I don't really buy into organized religion. Because yeah. I'm like, you know what, organized religion, you know, sometimes I feel like they got your hands and their hands in your pocket. You want to go to heaven, up, man. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go to heaven? Give me give me a thousand dollars. Pay for the church. Buy me a plane. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funny you say that, right? I, sh I showed someone something the other day. You know, are you aware of baptism? About a Baptist religion. Right. Okay. Yeah. So in the Caribbean, we have a lot of Baptist religions, right? And they do this thing called catching the power. We're like, I'm da -da 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 -da. talking this, this, uh, talking, talking yeah, I think it's called catching the power. So, blah, 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 blah. so I, sh I was showing this, um, this friend this the other day because I never heard about it. So he's like, What is this? I go, Yeah, catching the power. She's like, It was traumatic because I'm a young kid. I'm seeing people, grown adults, waving around and talking a funny language. And I'm like, What's wrong with these people? Then I showed her a video and it was this Kenyan pastor right and pastor and him he's catching the power I'll, I'll send you a link to the video right but what he does is he talks to them he does this right in front of them they start going that's all, that's all he does that's all he does right to the person that person and then he does the group the whole group starts doing that and she's like oh wow he's got magical powers i'm like really what it is social distance right whereas they feel or social cons cons is good i can't say what everyone wants to do what everyone wants to do basically right so if he yeah. does this and you don't do it you're going to feel away People look at you like, huh? what the hell are you doing here? So I feel that like they feel they must do it in order to be accepted in the congregation, right? Yeah, and I think that's, that's how everyone pressure. feels when it comes to religion. Some people feel like, mm -hmm. oh, they brought up with it. It's what their family wants from them or it's what makes them feel better. Therefore, they must go along with a narrative knowing full well it's not a really good narrative to follow. A hundred percent, man. And that's, and the thing is too, it's kind of like, I was telling my wife this, I didn't even know this, but I think in the States, they actually altered the Bible, right? So like your King James version, I'm like, who is King uh, James anyways? Yes. Right. Yes, but yes. It, I don't know if you heard the story where I have where it's like, yes. So, uh, Moses, uh, you know, his slaves, uh, you know, uh, you know, Egypt was nice to them. He let them go, you know, Moses let, or, uh, uh the Pharaoh let him go when he felt that their duty was done. And I'm yeah. like, wait a minute, did you guys just change the Bible? <laughs> so they changed the, the Bible. weren't going to get yeah. any ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying though, when it comes to these things. I'm curious, all right? So here's the thing I've learned the last couple of days, right? Like I mentioned to you, I'm going through a very traumatic uh, moment in my life. Like I talked about, it's three, it's three biggest teachers in life, right? Brokenness, failure, heartbreaks, right? Mm -hmm. I've had heartbreak, like really, really bad heartbreak. And for the first two days, bro, we're talking about attachments. Man, I was attached and I had to think to myself, wait, I chose to remove myself from that situation, yet I'm still, there's something holding me to it. I didn't understand because I'm so deep in my work. I'm so deep in my understanding, deep in my awareness. Yeah. I couldn't see the shadow that was still got a rope on me, just pulling me in, you know, just sucking me yeah. into a black hole of doom, right? And then I had to try to figure out like, what was it that was causing me the problem? Was it a fear of the future, fear of my current situation or fear of the past what's happened? And as you more try to understand this awareness side of it and attachment, I find that for us, these, these, this heartbreak lesson had to be something to learn so I, I couldn't figure it out so i went to um a reiki master of mine in the spiritual world right before all this i'll be honest with you i used to think all the spiritual stuff was woohoo nonsense like woohoo yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 blah blah crystals you crazy motherfuckers right <laughs> whatever okay but anyway you know we, we sat down he did his crystal things i fell asleep straight away um you know and then when i when i got up like during a session my body was moving by itself you know like he talked oh. and the thing is i subconsciously felt my body doing it but obviously I wasn't conscious to like we're doing as lying on flat. My hand came to my, my hand came to my throat. Right. I started doing this like, yeah, 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 yeah. To this, my right leg was all twitching and stuff moving about. Yeah, bro. It was weird shit. Then he pushed his hand on my, on my uh, solar plexus. And it felt like I had an elephant standing on me. The weight was so heavy, bro. It freaked me out, man. But I was in my subconscious. So even though I can feel it, I consciously couldn't react to it. Right. It was wow. nuts, but I was aware of it. Right. So anyway, we finish the session. <laughs> Afterwards, he tells me, he's like, look, you know, you're, you're heavy. You're heavy on the attachment. You're heavy on this earth with goods. And he gave me one thing that I believe really shifted my thinking. And I, I hope we can spread this to everyone else as a, yeah. as a lesson. The attachment I discovered was, was that I wasn't loving the person who I was when I was with that person. So for me, oh. I, was, I was in mourn of the person that was with that person. So now that I was free, in my head, 
I was still attached to that feeling of. So it was like torture, you know, even though I didn't like it, I needed it in order to, to fill whatever gaps was in me. It's crazy, bro. Have you ever experienced yeah. Reiki before? Any, anything spiritual like that before? No, no, not like that, man. It's like, crazy. I've done, that's, that sounds, well, I mean, it's interesting too, because it's almost like you started to fall in love with the identity that you created. You know what I mean? It's almost like like the avatar that it wasn't even real. It wasn't even real, family, because I felt, right, without going too much into it, I, I felt just that. But you know, again, the attachment, you like, you're in the relationship. And he says something to you, look, I, me and my girlfriend, we argue all the time. I see it all. They argue all the time, but it's a playful argument, right? So she pisses me off. I might not talk to her for a day. But he said, you know why I'm still with her? Because I love the man I'm with when I'm with her. And I love, the, who, I love who I am when I'm with her. And I love who I am when I'm not with her still. So those two are paramount. Whether she's there or not, I still love me. If I ever felt yeah. that she was taken away from me, loving myself, she's gone. And I was like, wow. damn, man. It's like, damn, man. I had to marinate on that, bro. That would kick me in the balls, man. <laughs> You know, <laughs> kick me in the balls. I was like, how can I? So I had to learn quickly from this attachment. And this is something I really want to want to discuss because it seems this this identification or this predetermined expectation of the people really weighs down heavy on people and really weighs down heavy on society. Like, what do you think is the best way for us to, to release that? Because we get with someone. We think, oh, well, they're, they're perfect for us. And then we don't, we, don't, we don't love who we are with them when we're with them, but we still stay because we fear that we won't get love like this again. Or we fear that yeah. we might not be good enough for someone. Like, what can you recommend for my guys, man, to, to work with? I think the number one thing, though, in that situation, I mean, for myself, I just found that, I mean, I never experienced, the thing is, hopefully, Lord willing, I'll never <laughs> have to go through it. <laughs> However... <laughs> In the past, what I found was just like, you know what, just go kill yourself at the gym. Like, if I physically just took my body into like the depths, and I mean, honestly, that's the way I kind of recovered from it was, you know what, keep your mind busy, keep your mind occupied. And honestly, I just went savage mode at the gym, because I'm like, right. this is what I know. And this is it's almost like, if you ever gone to that runner's high, right, where you run for hours and hours and hours, like, right, like, yep. for me, yep. like, I'm still a big dude and I still love pushing the weights. However, you know, at that time, I found that just doing that insane amount of cardio for me, just mentally, just it cleared my mind, man. And it just yeah. kind of took me into like another place and almost put me like in a nice meditative state. Like I just felt as though like I didn't have to deal with that situation. However, I was still running away from it. You yeah. know, I feel now like looking back in retrospect, maybe I should have just faced it and done some type of like, like, I, it was interesting because you mentioned the Reiki healing, right? And I didn't know about energy healing in the past, you know, but there's also massages that I was like looking into that I was talking to my wife. I think it's called somatic massages. Yep. Yep. Where you can actually take that out of your body, right? And recently I just saw uh, there's a book actually right here, The Tapping Solution, right? Where you get rid of all that stuff because it's interesting how the body will actually keep those traumatic experiences almost like a like a hardware like a like a hard drive right and it'll store in the body in random places yep. you'll yep. be like why do i got back pain you know random yep. back pain yep. and little do we know it's from some type of traumatic experience and it's almost like you got to let all that stuff go but you still need time you still you can use all these different modalities but time is the best healer man and just 100%. give yourself time to mourn too yeah, dude, definitely. You know? I did that, man. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. It's been it's been funny because we talk about masculinity, right? And 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 men and men men are told that they shouldn't cry, they shouldn't show weakness. But I believe showing yeah. vulnerability is one of the biggest strengths a man can have. Because I think yeah. the idea that you have to portray yourself as this tough, rugged, marine vet is BS for me personally. Yeah. You know, because those guys are trained to kill. Unless you're a trained killer, there's no need to try to become like a Marine because you're not out there trying to kill people. You're killing yourself and you're killing your conscious and emotions, mm -hmm. right? I believe without the ability to be vulnerable, i.e. to speak to someone or communicate what you want, you're effectively, in essence, killing your possibilities and experience, you know? So I cry. Yeah. I cry like a baby, dude. I did this thingy by this. I did, I'll, show you, I'll send you a link to his name, but he's a, I'll find it later. An amazing um, shaman, right? And yeah. he has this exercise where you put your hands out and you feel the power in your hands, right? And I kid you not, I'll send you, I'll send you, I'll send you a link later on. Yeah, I want you to do out. one and tell me if it happens to you or not, right? But during the exercise, he asks you to invoke your spirit guides, right? And then part of it, you have to ask your spirit guides to, to say to yourself, um, release the doubt 
that this isn't going to work for you and this is a lie by yawning or coughing. And I kid you not, brother, you start going, you start yawning, <laughs> big yawns, big, like, big yawns. And five times he goes, you know, if you, if you're going to get rid of, if they go spirit guides, if you're getting rid of this, if you're getting rid of the fear of this person, make them yawn five times in a row, bro, or cough. And you just start coughing, bro. I freaky. And every time I've done it, I've been doing it for the last three days wow. in a row. Right. Yesterday, after I did it, I was yawning so much. I started seeing blue angels and it was a shape. Honestly, I, I don't mess around on light. Right. I was yawning so much that my mouth was open so much and I felt it come out and it was blue. Right. You know, when you yawn, you can see red. I saw blue. Right. And blue shapes. And then afterwards, bro, I felt and he's like, OK, if 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 you're releasing the, the tension of the person, shake their body. Right. My body was just just convulsing, bro. I was freaked out. And I started to just wail like a baby. Right, you don't need cry so much, it's not filled your nose, yeah, 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 bro. <laughs> man, that's dripping down in my mouth and shit. I was like, Oh my god, this is crazy. <laughs> so, I want to send it to you because I think a lot of us men we don't do that enough, right? Yeah. Which is to, as you said, accept the hurt, accept the pain, and then deal with the reality versus trying to mask it and then hoping someone else would help us to get rid of it. Right, yeah. or something else because I, I agree with the gym thingy. I agree with that. I'm gonna tell you, I'm taking it down. I mean, like you just admitted as well, right? We can, yeah, we can try to distract, but we also have to heal it, right? You have to have to heal it for you. It was lucky because it, it took time and then time helps you forget. But if you're not strong like we are in terms of like you know, I know how to fix myself, right? I can, I can self patch myself. There's a guy called Joe Budden. His lyric is If my wounds are self inflicted, I can patch myself. Right. Ooh, and I was like, okay, yeah. but then how do you get to this point? I'm going back to awareness again. How can guys develop the power of being aware that they're, they're messing their lives up, aware that they have pain, aware that they have trauma, instead of trying to seek something else as a distraction or guide? And that's why we really want to get out to this session to help the people listening to today's, today's uh, video slash podcast. I feel like the only way to really, the only way to really experience that, man, is to go through it. You got to yeah. put yourself in the fire. I kind of feel like, you know what? You can do it through different modalities. You can do it from like, ah, I was listening to a shame and talk about this too, where he said one of the rites of passages. And that's the biggest teachers that I think most young men are not going through. There is no rite of passage. You go from playing video games to now you're paying rent working at your job. <laughs> but you didn't really become a man. You know what I mean? Like you didn't uh, really go through it. You, you got to uh, do something to force yourself to grow, to expand. Yeah. And I yeah. kind of feel like for me, like I always go back to the physical because I think... And it's interesting because that, that's what the shaman dude that I was listening to as well, he mentioned that when he was, uh, it was Matt Belair's podcast where he was talking about how a shaman told him the importance of, you know, that becoming a man ritual, you know, that rite of passage is that you have to destroy your physical self. And I think in this certain rite of passage, it's, they drew like a circle in like a canyon somewhere and you could not leave that circle for about a week, right? And, and the guy, you know, Matt looked at the guy. He's like, yo, this sounds awful. He's like, no, nah, it was incredible. Because after a week with no food, no water, I was just left with me and my soul. And he's like, and that's when you really start to realize like who you are, your mm. identity. You start asking those big questions. Mm. And it's almost like if in the Bible, it actually talks about the eagle as well. The eagle destroys himself before he becomes the majestic creature that he is, right? He destroys right. his beak. You know, he takes off all his feathers. And I kind of feel like that metaphor ties in for us too. Like right. it's, it's almost like you need to be destroyed or find a way to put yourself through a fire. You know, you got to do something. You got to right. challenge yourself somehow, whether it's right. university, whether, man, it's raising good kids. <laughs> I guess that was kind of mine. <laughs> right. But it did, man. It hit me. It hit me square in the face. And it really made me think twice about everything. Or some type of physical development, like competition, something, man. But you got to challenge yourself somehow. If not, you'll never learn. And you'll be stuck in your your basement for the rest of your life and it's kind of like if you go back to the exactly man like if you go to joseph campbell's um ah like the hero archetype right and so the hero archetype is very simple right homeboys at home doing nothing then all of a sudden somebody comes along and says hey we got this issue that we should take care of and he's like well i don't really want to go with you but i guess i'll go for the adventure then he goes for the adventure and then what happens you know he gets tested in a whole bunch of different ways and finally he challenges the dragon then he kills the dragon slays the dragon after he's done slaying the dragon you know, he comes home with uh the booty figuratively or literally <laughs> <laughs> you know and then he comes back uh, home a champion 
And that's, yep. that's a story that we can all relate to that meet those still is relevant today because we got to go through it. You got to challenge like, what's your dragon, find that dragon, kill it, get onto the next level. Right. And that's kind of why, and I think a lot of us, you know, human beings, we are here to be creative. We yeah. got to create something, man. You cannot die. That's kind of my biggest fear. You know, like I was in my thirties yeah. and I'm like, well, you know, I've been acquiring knowledge for the past 30 years or yeah. 20 years, actually, yeah, you know, yeah. and I've been experiencing this stuff, you know, and I've been like working out as a kid, like, you know, yeah. I can bring all this stuff to the light and help people. And that's kind of like, for me, it was kind of like an eye opening moment, right? Where it's just like, you know what? maybe I should put this into the world. I think people would benefit from it. And I think we as creators, you know, it's like, you got to learn and take all that stuff that you learn from the lessons. And now it's important for you to share that. It's part of your progress and you helping others, you actually help yourself, right? As a secondary effect, because you are forced to learn more. You're forced to expand more. So by default, you fall into that whole progress situation because you're like, dude, I got to just keep learning more about this it's kind of like tony robbins said and i thought it was very interesting because he's like what's wrong with being rich and he's like is there anything wrong with being rich no and he's like you know why the rich get richer because they're developing their skills and they're getting better at what they do which in turn makes them richer it's like it's nothing there's nothing wrong with being strong you know you, you meet a strong man he's trying to become stronger he's trying to progress and that's what we got to do too right yeah. and it's yeah. almost like after you're done defeating that dragon how are you going to help other guys defeat theirs but you got to challenge yourself somehow. And that's the one thing where I can't help anybody. Like yeah. if, if you don't, if you don't go out there and do it, you don't go do something. You don't start a website. Like at the very least, you got to do something, man. Yeah. At the very least, like, Hey man, make your, make your bed. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what's funny something. you mentioned? Funny you mentioned that the, um, the circle thingy. And when I was up uh, at my friends, they was telling me there's two types of thing. There's uh, I think it's Vishwana yeah, silent retreat, which is 11 day silent retreat, but there's another one which I'm going to do. Okay. So it's 11 days, right? And it's, it's a, it's a dark room. So I get a dark room and there's, you have no windows, no nothing, but you only have two stimuli, which is two gongs per day. One gong to get up, one gong to go to sleep. That's it. Then they, they send you food into your room. You have no, I mean, no, like pitch black for 11 days. Wow. Right. Pitch black. And it's 11 days, solitary confinement. Um, gong, you must wake up. Gong, you must go to sleep. And he was talking about this and he was talking about the other three, 11 day silent retreat. And I was like, okay, you know what? I think the silent retreat might be great, but I, I want to push myself and really be alone with myself, face my fears and not have any other stimulation to distract me, like read a book or touch my phone, you know, or whatever. I have no sights, no, no uh, senses, you know, besides maybe, you know, touch and, 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 uh, and taste when I'm eating food. Other than that, be with self. So I'm going to be doing that in about a week's time. I'm going to come back and, and report back in how it was, you know, but uh, got to do that, man. Just really, I've never heard anything like that before. I've never heard of that. You know, what do you think of something like that? Uh, 11 days locked up in a room with two gongs. I think, you know what, it's going to force you to face your demons. And I think a lot of us, I think we're scared. For, we're scared of it. I mean, you have the balls to go after it and actually face it, which I think, A, a lot of, it tells you about where you are right now in this life too. Right. Like for myself, man, like I would love to go do that. You know, that, that, that's the kind of stuff that's going to force that growth. Right. And we go back to that tension. It's going to force you to grow. And as far as maybe it's not a rite of passage, but it's further expansion and further introspectiveness into like, yo, who am I? Why am I here? And asking these big questions. Like I always ask people at work jokingly, like, oh, I'm just trying to figure out why I'm here. But I'm like, deep down, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out why I'm here. <laughs> well, I'm here. Yeah, that makes sense, bro. It makes sense. Yeah, I, think I, I, think we're, I think we're missing that, though, trying to find our purpose and understand why we're here. A lot, of, a lot of guys are just confused what they should do with their day, what they should do with their lives. And it stems from everything else that they're trying to do. So let me ask you this, because I'm really curious about this, because we're on the same kind of wavelength, right? So obviously, go mm -hmm. and do something. That's all well and good, but most people choose not to, because it's easier not to do something, right? Oh, so yeah. like for the average Joe, how, how can I, how can I, how can I take that lesson and really try to affect it and do something with it? Because it's easy for us to do it because we're, we're disciplined and we, we, we can force ourselves to do it. But for the guy who's just playing video games, the guy who's just coming home after work and just wants to watch TV, watch some Netflix and doesn't really bother with themselves. How can we inspire them to at least seek to find a resolution versus trying to take action? Well, the number one thing I would say, man, is clarity obviously is super important, but what I would say is go home, write a list of your five biggest dreams that scare you. Five biggest dreams that scare you, right? 
and then start working backwards onto how he would actually reach that goal. And then you'll get a little bit of a game plan, you know? And like, let's say, let's say your first goal was to make a million dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you write down, make a million dollars. And you say, okay, well, shoot, how do I make a million dollars? Well, first thing I probably got to do is research, you know? It's going to be a scary undertaking, but shoot, I'm probably going to start with research. Uh, number two, maybe mentorship, man. I might need some coaching, right? So I'm like, okay, that, that these are things that are relevant, right? And then, okay, I, I can't trade my time because I will never get rich. So how do I go about figuring this stuff out? So, okay, I, I should probably sell a product, right? So write that down. Okay, what have I worked in? And then shoot, maybe a guy looks back and says like, well, I've never actually gone to the leadership role at my job. You know what? I'm going to work harder at work and I'm going to see if I can get a leadership just so I can get the experience that I need that will help me in my own goals because I can transfer that over later on. You know, that's not a bad, I'll write that down, right? Let's say he reaches that and now he's got a better goal, more understanding, more research. He can further go down into whatever strategy he's got laid out. Then you can look at it like, okay, well, what's, what's hot right now? Like what, what's good? And just write down like, okay, you know what? Sofas, sofas are selling hot, you know, 500 bucks a pop. Maybe it's the next thing coming online. I don't know, right? Studies the market, gets in there and starts working on that and starts developing his skills and starts dedicating his time. The thing that the most important thing is to get the ball rolling. But the first thing you do is want to write down those steps and start working backwards. But then you'll, you'll just start to like right now, I'm just brainstorming. I have no idea if sofas are hot right now or not. You know, <laughs> I have absolutely no clue. But what I do know is like, you know, with some basic understanding, you can start building stuff, right? And you just kind of start looking at it and maybe your steps. And I mean, the funniest thing I remember when I saw is like, this is what we expect success to be, you know, a straight right. line. Right. And then what success actually is, is like, it's like all, all over, over here. that place, all over. And the next thing yep. you know, it's like, boom, you made yep. it. Right. Yep. And it's like for myself, I'm still over here somewhere, you know, I'm still trying to figure this stuff out as well. But I feel that at least it's more important to be halfway through, you know, at least you're working towards your goal every single day. And even if it's just getting to that leadership role at work that, you know, you can transfer over and, you know, you can take those skills and you can use it for something that you actually want. It's going to motivate you to actually start pursuing whatever it is that you want with more vigor. And it'll actually make your day every single day. It's going to give you a little bit more purpose because you're like, you know what? I'm not really here for my boss. I'm here for myself. Right. So, and then yeah. it's like, hey, you know what? I can actually they got grants for me to go to school. You know what? Sign me up. I'll get that certification X, Y, Z. Cause I know it can help me. I can gather yeah. as many skills and all yeah. of a sudden it opens up your mind to the fact that you got resources all around you. Yeah. You got the library. It's been sitting there for years and you never went to the library. You got YouTube. And now you're like, you know what? Forget the NBA highlights. I'm going to go and see what's going on in this whole drop shipping business, you know, and you start to open your mind up, but you can't open your mind up to these possibilities. If you're closed mindedly, just thinking about, you know, your next dopamine fix, whether it's porn, video games, YouTube, all that kind of stuff is just meant to, I feel, keep the man down or just keep everybody Absolutely. down, you know? Absolutely. They're Absolutely. distractions. Consume, 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 don't create. Why would you why would you want to create exactly. wealth, create content, create a legacy when you can just consume it all? All right. And then then is is a is an easy way to make a million dollars, just pay me 1099 a day, and then I'll show you how to do this, <laughs> or you know, or just follow my my seven-day mastermind. Like at the end of the day, it's all it's all it's all people just want to consume. Because we don't feel mm -hmm. like we can create, therefore, because we are creative beings, but the essence of exactly. power that we have to create has been zapped down and downplayed. If you don't feel creative, you won't try to aspire. You won't try to aspire, you'll stay where you are. And the people who are doing it, who are aware, can continue to be miles ahead of us. So, so exactly. I think the problem with things like that exists for. A hundred percent, man. But it's almost like write down those dreams, man. Write down those dreams and write them without fear. Because yeah. I think the other thing too is that you'll start to make that paradigm shift. And I can 100% relate to people on this. Like for me, the physical goals that I was able to attain, you know, your rip, your jack, like I feel like that was easy. However, the one thing that I look back from that, you know, cause I did that obviously from a place of hurting and then later on I just did it cause I loved it. And now I'm just an addict that, you know, I can't stop, won't stop. I just can't, you know, I love it. But the thing is it's, love I can game. take a lot of those. <laughs> love the hustle. <laughs> You know, but the thing is, though, you can take those concepts that you've learned, you know, and, yep. and maybe you started off with pain in your heart. But later on, you're like, you know what, I can take that discipline. I can take all, all that I learned as far as researching goes. I can take my certifications that I got as a personal trainer and be like, well, what did I, what did I use to make sure that I came out on top and that I succeeded, you know, getting 
my certifications and all that. What, what did it take? I'm like, oh, it just took a little bit more effort. It took discipline. It took a little bit of courage and the balls to follow through, right? So maybe if I apply that into this new thing that I want to create, maybe I'll be successful, Yeah. right? And then you start, your paradigm starts to shift. And that's the biggest thing that I would tell guys is like, yo, man, the paradigm you're living in right now doesn't have to be the paradigm that you have to live in for the rest of your life. You know, we can all change that. However, you know, change doesn't happen overnight. And that's what I think a lot of guys, including myself, you know, at times when you failed, it's, it's almost like, I think a lot of us just fail because we give up halfway through, which is the one thing I told myself, you know, I'm not going to do that again, you know, see it through till the end. And if you look back after, you know, a year at the body of work that you created, you're going to amaze yourself and be like, wow, you know, like, shoot, I did all that. I did all that. You know, I did that too recently, you know, right. And you look at yeah. it and you're like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. Actually. I'm just going to keep moving forward. So I don't, you know, rest on my laurels because, you know, I've, I've, I'm proud of it. However, I'm not done yet. Right. And it's almost like if you are able to apply that and you realize that every single day for the rest of your life, you can continue on this journey. Lord only knows what you're going to achieve in 10 years, 15 oh, years, amazing. 20 years. Yep. Yep. And that's legacy. Right. Because after that, it's like, hey, you know, hey, son, I got something I can give you. Yep. And that was, that's what really motivates me, man. At the end of the day, it's like, hey, this is for you. That's right. The important so, bit. The why. Yeah. That's so important. The why. A lot of people are fixated, worried about what should I do? You know, when should I do it? You know, how? How am I going to do it? And none of them just ever think about, okay, why do I need to do it? Why must I develop my self-esteem? Why must I develop my self-discipline? Why must I get up my ass and, and do so? Why must I get up my own way? They're so worried about the how, the what, and the when that they're missing the most mm -hmm. important thing that drives them. You know, you're saying your son. So whatever happens to you in terms of you wake up in the morning and feel like shit, you'll be like, no, nah, man, my son needs me to do this. I'm doing this exactly. for him, not for me. You know, if you did it for you, you'd be like, yeah, one more hour in bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right but you think now it's an hour less that i can be go achieve it's an hour less i can be going but this is how we developed ourselves after a lot of work yeah. but i i feel i feel that not just men in general because some women watch my channel as well and they're probably looking for ideals for this but i feel that a lot of people in general have lost sight of their wires which is the purpose and the reasons for things you know i know we were talking about distraction of youtube and stuff but you know, sometimes I watch a bit of YouTube too, just to, you know, get a bit of whatever, 100%. but for half an hour, that's it. Yeah. You know? But the thing is, there's nothing wrong with that because you discover what your balance is. There's actually an excellent book. I forgot who wrote it, but it's actually called Start With Why. And I'd, I'd read it a couple of years ago and it changed the way I thought because it immediately made me think, you know, the first question you should always ask the why, and you mentioned the how, the what, the when, like all that stuff is kind of irrelevant. If you don't know your why, it doesn't matter that's because you're not really going to pursue it. You're gonna, yeah. You might do it, but it'll be half-assed. Well, when you start with why, like, why am I really doing this? Why am I really pursuing this? You know, obviously it's like, well, I can help myself. I can help my family. I can help all the people around me. I can help people achieve their goals. You know, it's a pretty solid ideal, you know, and it's, it's something that's going to better everybody around me, make this society be better, a better place. Then why not? You know, and that's kind of, uh, that's how you tie that in. Right. But the whole what, when, where, and that's when people kind of get caught up on like, you know, the, outer decor of, of the house without even knowing what the foundation is, man. And that's right, where yeah. I see that all the time where it's like, you know, buddy goes out, buys all the podcast equipment. You know, this guy's got all the brand new stuff, this that, and the other. And then, you know, a month later, he's like, Hey, you know, I'm trying to sell my stuff, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing didn't work out, you know, just yeah. not for me. <laughs> they try for two days and they didn't make money for it. So they give up. Like they don't, they don't see the long-term project. I get this a lot from especially some of my students when they start off, you know, so I try to get them quick wins. Just to make it, I understand how the human brain works. They're like, oh my God, my life hasn't changed yet. Bro, it's been three days. You know, yeah, exactly. but I'm not seeing results. I'm like, bro, it's a nine month, no, it's, a, it's a 90 day program, right? So you're not going to see in three days or a week. It takes time to change mindset. It takes time to build exactly. something. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It also wasn't destroyed in a day either. You know, so it takes yeah. time to build and destroy, you know? So I think a lot of people are just wanting immediate gratification because that's what they get. Instant Pop-Tarts, instant TV, instant radio it's supplied whatever it's and everything's on demand now whereas before we used to have yeah. to work for things you have to pick up the phone and dial our friend are you are you home today we actually have to work for things you know <laughs> now we can send yeah. a text and forget about it and then they'll get back to us whenever they get back to us but you lost the art of actually working towards things yeah but it kind of goes back to the whole you know your attachment thing that you brought up earlier it's like 
we're almost attached to these things now. So it's, it, it's even harder, right? Because yep. it's almost like I see a lot of people, you know, they're just attached to their phone. They're attached to a social media account that, you know, really does nothing for them other than take time. You know, you see it everywhere where it's like people are so entrenched into stuff that just doesn't matter, man. And not just that, it's like they're just like they can't live without it. It's like me and my phone are, you know, just together and separate best buddies. And I think like that's where that big disconnect is coming. But I do feel at the same time, if you're able to harness that and figure out, you know what, I can balance my time, I can work, you know, I can still go on my phone, all that kind of stuff. If you're able to do that in this day and age and resist the, you know, the dopamine hits from from YouTube, the social media, all that stuff, you're going to be miles ahead, man. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, a lot of guys would benefit from just knowing how to manage their time. So obviously you want to start with why, why am I doing this? Why, whatever. Then you, you got to start out or the next thing you got to do is like, okay, well, how am I going to develop my strategy and how am I really going to manage my time? Because if I don't, you know, I may be unbalanced, right? And even though I know that if you're going to be successful, you do got to become unbalanced at times, right? Because I know you're, sometimes you got to sprint, man. And sometimes, hey, whether you like it or not, you're going to be on that laptop for the next six hours, eight hours, 10 hours. And it's like, well, it's dark outside. It's two in the morning. I got to keep going. <laughs> Buddy, bro, I feel <laughs> right? so that. You know, like, and that's one of the things where it's like, sometimes you do got to be unbalanced, but for the most mm. part, you want to make sure that you have a certain criteria that you meet every day and stick to it. Cause yeah. that's the biggest thing, man, where I'm like, I don't know, man. Like I, lately I've been obsessed with trees. There's a book that I want to read. It's called the secret life of trees. And I'm looking at just trees and how they grow. Right. So trees grow with sunlight, water, but the number one thing that they have is consistency. Nobody sees it actually grow. Nobody actually looks at all the leaves popping up. And, you know, obviously you see it, you know, seasonal changes in that, but it's like, you just, you know, four years later, you come back and you're like, whoa, that tree is huge. <laughs> In the same vein, you know, somebody can come back later and be like, whoa, man, your business is massive. Oh, whoa, man, you're super successful now. Whoa, you know, you've made some massive gains at the gym, man. You put on like 20 pounds. How'd you do that? Well, it's like, number one, it, it didn't happen overnight. It happened, right. you know, and a lot of people didn't even look twice at it. It's kind of like that tree over there that's a redwood now that's just massive. It's like, you didn't really pay attention day in, day out. It just did its thing day in and day out. Rain, shine, it didn't matter. It just kept growing. And now you see abundance as far as like, you know, leaves and everything that grows around it and what it does for you know our ecology and all that good stuff. But it's almost like it just doesn't stop. And that's the biggest thing where I'm like, consistency, man. Consistency, discipline, and having a good program. Stick to it, man. Just stick to yeah. it. You know, it's easy for us. You know, like, it's easy for us. To, it's easy for us to say purely because, like, again, you know, we've developed the muscle, we've developed the skills, and so forth to be consistent. But it's what happens to most people, though, like I said, trauma comes in, day-to-day -day life comes in, family comes, and whatever comes in, and then they stop. And then they're like, oh, yeah. well, it's easy to stay where I am because now it's like pushing that car, right? If your car breaks down, you give it a shove, and you push, 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 push to the gas station. You take a break, like, oh man, I'm gonna push this car again, right? But you don't think you forget. <laughs> All you need is the effort, then the car starts rolling. But all you're thinking about is the effort, right? You're not yeah. thinking about how it rolls. You're like, oh, but I'm going to get up. And, uh. Once it gets going, it's easy to push. It right? is. It but it's that is. moment yeah. when you stop, you look at it and you think, fuck, man. Instead of just being flat, it now looks like it's going uphill. You know, and you're pushing a, a 40, 40 ton <laughs> freaking tank rather than a, a SUV or whatever, you know? So I think, I think that's what you mean. With, not what you mean, but that's, I mean, that's what I think a lot of people miss when it comes to consistency. They look at the effort rather, rather than the momentum and then the, not the outcome, but where it will be once they keep that consistent growth going or consistent discipline or work or whatever. Whatever it is. The thing is, I mean, what I tell my clients as far as, uh, you know, getting in shape is don't worry about that finish line. Don't worry about that finish line. Let's say you're going to work with me for four months, whatever it may be. Don't worry about the finish line. We're just setting you up for the rest of your life. Right. right? So we're going to get you to a certain. And the thing is, like you said, too, man, you got to develop that mindset. The mindset is everything, right? Like, that's the one thing I learned, too, as a personal trainer is like, bro, I'm not really trained the body. I'm trained the mind, dude. Like, I've had to read more books on psychology to figure people out. I'm like, bro, I told you not to eat that, man. Why are you eating that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that being said, you know, the other thing to keep in mind as well is that for people who have a difficult time getting started, don't be dumb. Get yourself a coach and whatever it is that you want to do. 
Like I've talked to people who like one dude, man, Michael and broken, he was telling me that he spent over a hundred grand on coaching. Right. And this guy, like, man, like he's super intelligent dude, this, that, and the other. And other people may look at that and be like, Oh, that's so dumb. I would never hire a coach. LeBron James spends $4 million on coaches, masseuse, and a whole team of people to work on his body so that this guy can keep, you know, getting to that next level, keep progressing, you know, man, Ronnie or not Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, Phil Heath, they work with Hanny Rambod, Andre Lewis, some like physique competitor. They work with this Hanny Rambod guy, one of the greatest personal trainers out there. And a lot of people would probably look at him and be like, well, why do these bodybuilders and, you know, fitness professionals, they don't need no personal trainer, man. They don't need that. I don't need that. I'm like, bro, you probably do. Cause if the best guy out there is paying top dollar for a personal trainer, for a coach, what makes you think that you're better than the best guy in the business, man? It's like, you know why they go to that coach? Because he can see things that you cannot see you know and I go to a coach too because I'm like hey like hey how does my squat look you know what's going on is my hip you know is that out of place you know yeah, it's like oh yeah. you're kind of leaning a little bit more to the right you know there's certain things that you just can't see but the biggest thing that a coach does too, too in my opinion when it comes to people getting in shape is accountability man accountability I think in your realm it's probably the same thing where it's like hey you know we're gonna get after it today you know I'm just gonna give you a friendly reminder like hey you remember you said you were gonna go do this Let's go do it. Right. And that's kind of the biggest thing that people want to just step over. Like, it doesn't matter. But I'm like, no, no, no. That's probably one of the most important things you can do. And that's probably one of the biggest shortcuts that anybody can take in this life is learn from the experiences and the mistakes of others. So that you don't have to go live it. So you don't want to go get injured. Get yourself a coach, man. Get you yourself get a coach. coach. Well, I love that. <laughs> you know, I love that mentor. analogy. Yeah, I, know, I love that yeah. analogy because people don't do that nowadays. I think it's weird because obviously I, I'm in that realm, but I don't want to, I don't, I don't sell to people. People come to me because they need whatever they need. But I totally agree. You know, when I was going through my all issues, I tried to figure things out myself. But again, my accumulated knowledge wasn't enough to get me over the finishing line. It wasn't enough to even get me started in the race. I was running the wrong race. You know, I was, I was trying to do a marathon in a sprint. It's not going to work, you know, and I was trying to sprint in a marathon. It's just never going to work. I need to be in the yeah. right stadium. I need to be in the right mindset. I need to be in the right field. I need to be running the right race. So when I got myself some coaches, they put me in the right path, gave me a strategy, kept me accountable, and it helped me to, to see the results that I wanted to see. But I think a lot of people feel, they feel like, no, you know, I can do this myself because ego says, yeah, you know, it's, I, don't, I don't need someone to tell me what to do. You know, one guy said to me, oh, you're too young. You know, wisdom is age. I'm like, really? So I said to him, okay, so tell me something, yeah? What's the difference between an 18-year-old mother, so an 18-year-old woman giving birth to a child, and a 13-year-old woman giving birth to a child for the first time? What's the difference, right? Because yeah. there's no difference. <laughs> She's going to learn to become mother the first time, just like the 30-year-old woman's going to learn to become mother the first time. The difference is not in the age, it's in the experience you've accumulated and therefore exactly. can give to someone else. You know, exactly. so it's all that, it's all these mindsets people have. And I think everyone just feels that they can be their own, not your own hero, but they feel like they can, um, they can patch themselves with the knowledge they've already had, but they seem to forget the knowledge already had got them to where they are. Exactly. You know? Knowledge is exactly. great. Wisdom is better. Wisdom is a lot better, but the only way to really attain wisdom is from experiences, man. And obviously for me, I think it's well worth it. It's well worth the investments. Like spend the money on and, and talk to a dude who's been there, done that. It's like, in, instead of like, you know, just thinking and trying to figure out online, like there's a lot of great resources online. However, you're not going to get the most out of what you really want, you know, yeah. or, or really reach that goal as quickly or as, as effectively or as safely or in the best way possible than dealing with a guy who's been there, done that and is doing it successfully. It's kind of like I had a buddy who went to the business school here um at ubc at the university around here and he's like man i don't even know why i listen to these professors they're idiots i'm like why what are you taking he's like i'm taking i'm taking business <laughs> i'm taking business right and i'm like oh real talk right he's like honestly i feel like the drug dealers on my block no more than these fools like they don't really know. <laughs> like they don't really know what they're talking about you know they don't really go out there and live it they just go and talk about it and they read right. theory theory and it's all theoretical exactly man and i'm like well if you are able to find somebody that has been able to merge the theory with the experience, bro, you want to take it as much as you possibly can from that dude because that dude's living it, but he's also keeping abreast with all the things that are important and relevant right now to whatever industry that he's in, right? So it's almost that combination, man, where it's like, you know what? If you're able to find a coach that's got those two things, bro, you're going you're gonna to be miles ahead of the game.
I love that, man. Kriyata, thank you. I'm going to have to wrap it up with you um, soon as well because I have to jump on another call in like uh, two minutes. So look, before we go, before we go, because I, I, time just goes, we're just chopping up. We've got to do this again, man. I, I want know, to be a know, weekly man. thing, bro. Now, <laughs> I'm going sure. to book you. I'm going to book you for once every week now for like the next month and see how Let's it works it, on my man. YouTube because I, I think we've got some some, some fire here. Um, guys, yes, let me sir. know in the comment section if you guys agree with this as well. If you do comment, um, comment, do it in the comment section if you want us to uh, to do this once a week. So Kamara, look, tell people uh, um, you know, what your superpower is and how they can reach you if they want to be able to utilize your superpowers for their own benefits. So if you want to get in touch with me, you want to do some personal training, really get your body to that next level, reach the physique of your dream, be sure to reach out to me at um, conrad.rodriguez at masculinehealthsolutions.com or follow us on Instagram too, masculine underscore health underscore solutions under... I'll, oh, what, what I'll it? put it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'll put, put it, I'll put it, I'll put it in description. <laughs> so guys, go in the description. Uh, make sure you hit up Conrado as well. And in the comment section, just say that Kimron sent you, right? So we know who, how many guys have you gone there. And I'm sure Conrado will give you a small percentage discount. Yeah, so you know who you are. Yeah, exactly. Yes, so he knows who you are. Um, so just put Kimron sent me in the comments on his Instagram or I'll just reach out to him directly and say, Kimron sent me and I'm sure you guys can work out something amazing, man. Kimron, thank you so much, dude. I have loved this session. I think um, this is what's needed in the manosphere at the moment is, you know, two guys yeah. really chopping it up about what's going to benefit us rather than talking about why women are doing this and what, yeah, nah. I can't be asked without this stupid that anyway, that. Of nonsense. <laughs> you know, it's simp freaking behavior, weak assness behavior. So I just want to get that straight this is we're, we're revolutionary in our thinking revolutionary yes, with our approach and no one's not doing it out there so guys uh, make sure you leave a comment saying um, what you guys think about us doing it next week and also obviously hit Conrado on any of the links below and if you hit him directly oops, hit him directly on his Instagram I'm sure he'll do something for you and work you out Conrado thank you brother man I've sure. seriously 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 enjoyed this so guys if you um, want to see more of this make sure you leave a comment make sure you like subscribe and hit the notification bell because I'm going to do more of this stuff catch you next video all right, to the next.